Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is gonna be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and the housing market will lead us into recession. Maybe stocks will lead us out, but the housing market is certainly, I think that we can all agree at this point that it will lead us into recession. Now, what I wanna do guys is explain kind of where we're at right now with the recession. Now, I've been listening to, I listen a lot to Meet Kevin and I love some of the concepts that he has and I like to grow from there because I'm mainly focusing on the housing market, right? I'm not focusing on the entire economy. So I, you know, go to economists and newspapers and articles just to try to re-educate myself on what's going on. But I tend to agree with his premise of this. What's going on right now is a federally induced recession, right? So the Federal Reserve is causing us to go into recession. The reason they're causing us to go into recession is they're battling inflation, right? They're battling unaffordability. And I'm not saying that they did or did not make that, although I actually I am saying that they actually caused it, right? But the thing is, guys, this is the Federal Reserve. This is not necessarily a systematic failure like in 2008 subprime mortgage collapse, right? And foreclosure crisis. We had multiple systematic failures in our last recession. This time around, the systematic failure right now is unaffordability, right? Is inflation. So one of the things that Kevin points out that I actually agree with and I actually love is his argument is as soon as inflation goes back down to say 2%, everything should go back to normal, right? And I would agree with that. When inflation comes back down, things should go back to normal within reason. Obviously, some things are already breaking right now, but things should go back to normal. Here's the thing, you guys. I started thinking about that. Obviously, black swan events. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the problem is, is the inflation is greatest in the housing market. I don't care about eggs. I don't care about wood. I don't care about any of that stuff. I care about my mortgage payment. I care about my rent payment and how unaffordable that is. So the situation is this, you guys. The problem is the housing market is so sticky. It is so difficult to, to de-inflate the housing market that in order to do that, in order to get the inflation under control, in order for the unaffordability to be under control in the housing market, things are going to have to break. Things are going to have to break hard. And we're going to have to have a flood of inventory. We're going to have to have price wars. People will have to get hurt in order for the housing market to properly reset. And this is what I'm saying, you guys, the leading catalyst, other than the unaffordability, the leading catalyst in the recession, in the housing market will be new home builders. The thing with new home builders, you guys, is they got massively rug pulled. A lot of these new home builders got unlucky. Remember, a lot of them started building based on 0% interest rates. Now interest rates are four and 5%. So new home builders that are overexposed, heavily exposed, in fact, in certain metro areas are going to be the leading cause of this recession. And I believe as a result of all of the overbuilding, like I showed you in my metro reports, all of that overbuilding, all of the exposure, those people are going to go bankrupt. And if they don't go bankrupt before they go bankrupt, they're going to do insane fire selling insane fire selling. And this is what I'm saying as a result of that, you guys, as a result of insane fire selling, that is going to drastically affect the resale market, right? The resale or used homes that will drastically affect them because they are eventually, and we're already seeing it a little bit in my market, they're eventually going to have to start competing with all of the new homes. As a seller on a resale home, that's not something that you want to do because we don't have as sellers always, we don't have the ability to give crazy buying incentives like the builders. So I'm saying again, you guys, a lot of people don't see this. A lot of people don't see this. A lot of people think Lennar's fine. KB's fine, even though we have a record cancellation rate. But here's the thing, you guys, what do I know, right? I've lost everything, right? I'm not that smart. What do I know? But this is what I'll say. Okay, this is my belief. Housing market leading us into recession, top catalyst, home builders. What's the problem? Unaffordability. That's the sticky inflation. In my eyes, I'm only watching what the Federal Reserve is doing to the housing market because that's my area of expertise. That's my area of study. But the thing is, guys, all of the caution, a lot of caution is being thrown to the wind. And I want to bring up real quick, let's talk about yield curves. Let's talk about the inversion of the yield curves, because remember, that is one of the leading and most accurate indicators of an upcoming and recession. So the fact that there's so many people, we won't go into recession, we'll go into a soft landing, things of that nature. But when we look at the depth of the inversion, if we study the depth of the inversion, it's signaling a deep, deep 
recession. Obviously, that's giving us a warning. That's waving f red flags like, hey, guys, be careful incoming deep recession. But let me show you guys just how deep the inversion is. I'm going to access some Fred economic data charts and let's review what happens when the yield curves invert. Take a look. Okay, so the first up we have the 10 and three month. Now, it's crazy that we're so inverted under the three month, guys. That means the three month is yielding higher than the 10 year and it's inverted. So the rate is lower on the 10 year and it's usually the opposite. But I wanna point out, and this is going back to 1985 and I did max that out, but I wanna point out right here that it inverted back in 1989 and it was followed by a recession. This gray line right here, you guys, is a recession. Next, here's another inversion right here. Boom, led into a recession, okay? Next, next inversion is right here, you see that? Boom, led into a recession. So when it inverts, it leads to a recession, okay? Now look at over here. This was, a lot of people don't realize that we actually did go into a recession in 2020. So it did invert right before we went into recession. Now look at it right now, look at this guys. It is not only inverted right now, look at the depth. We have not, at least for the last, at least since 1982, we have never had this depth of inversion when comparing the 10 year to the three month. Y'all see that? This is an insane, insane inversion. This is right here is what people look at to basically to figure out whether or not we're going to go into recession. And it's always led us into recession. Look at that. Every time it's inverted, recession, recession, recession. But the scary thing is, guys, here's the scary thing. We still, still don't know how bad it's going to be. And I think it's getting a lot worse because there's still so much dust in the air from all the money printing. Because there's all the money printing and that you know smoke screen is still in the air, there's a lot of narratives or there's opinions, right? There's a lot of difference of opinions in me, a lot more cheerleading opinions. I'm of a cautious opinion. So, you know, for anyone that thinks, oh, I'm crazy or I'm just fear, you know, doom and gloom, you guys look at the inversion, look at the depth of the inversion. It's historical. It's, a, it's an indicator of a recession. How am I crazy? How, how am I doom and gloom? You guys, this is happening right now. I'm just saying, look, watch it. Look for yourself. But you guys, let's look at another indicator. Let's look at the 10 and the two. All right, guys, so here's the 10 and the two. This is only going back to 1976. So this is also a really good indicator. Um, this is also a really good indicator, but the bigger indicator was the three month, the two years, also important. You guys can see it inverted right here in 1978, led into a recession, inverted again in the end of uh, the beginning of 1980s, led to a recession, also inverted right here in 1989, led into a recession. As you can see by that gray line, we come here. It did invert in the 2000s, again, led to a recession as indicated in this gray line. Another inversion in 2006, look at, so they had warning of an impending recession in 2006. Look at this, into 2007 and they missed it. They missed it and it was, it was a brief inversion, but it led to a massive recession right here. So I just wanna point out, here's the 10, here's the 10 and two right now. We have a very deep, inversion right now for the 10 and the two. The last time we had this depth of inversion, y'all, look at way over here in the 1970s and 1980s. And in order for the government to get inflation under control back then, they had to raise interest rates like crazy. Now let me make a point real quick. In order for the Fed to hit their 2% inflation goal, okay? Because remember, housing market's very sticky. That's what most of us are watching, the housing market. You guys, more than likely, in my opinion, they're going to have to keep the federal funds rate at four and a half, five percent for multiple years. They're going to have to do that for multiple years. The market's not pricing that in. So I believe that once the market starts waking up, because the Federal Reserve has basically said that, I, I, I don't understand why the market's going against what they're saying. So it's very, very interesting. And not only that, the stock market is also going against the yield curves, right? So I don't understand that. It's really, really, it's really, really strange to me. But the thing is, is if that happens, guys, and it's not priced in, we're going to see another, we're going to see it start. We're going to see the panic start. We're going to see even bigger price cuts. That happens this year. I don't know when exactly it happens this year. I know we'll have year over year price decline on a national level at the end of February or starting at the end of February. But it's going to be really interesting to see how many people get blindsided from what's happening right now. Not what's going to happen, what's happening right now. Again, I'm saying the black swan event is new construction. That's the black swan event. The new construction companies cannot hold onto all their inventory. You guys, we have over nine months of inventory. I just got back from Seattle, 
Phoenix and Las Vegas and predominantly Las Vegas and Phoenix. I found thousands of homes that were being worked on without contracts. How do I know that? Because I walked into the sales offices and I asked them, that's how I know that I asked them what was, and I asked them what was available. And most all of the homes that you guys saw in Phoenix and in Vegas, you guys, they don't even have contracts. And if they don't have contracts, that means those homes are just going to sit as spec homes and it's going to eat away at the cash flow of that builder. And we have big builders, Lennar, KB, DR Horton, that I believe are dr not even a little bit drastically, drastically overexposed. And I believe that they're expecting a flood like we had in 2022, a flood of buyers come back this spring. So I think we're going to find out real, real quick the reality of what's going on. But not only that, guys, let me show you what Lennar is doing right now. All right. And then Lennar is a good indicator to see what the rest of the builders are going to do, because usually they follow Lennar. Let me show you what's happening in Austin, Dallas and San Antonio. All right. So here is Lennar. I'm going to go to Austin first. Let me show you some of the price cuts here, guys. Let me move my picture over here. All right. So first price. Shoo, shoo. First price cuts 140,000. This one's what 130,000 price cut in Austin. I mean, this is this is crazy. Here's another one at $110,000 price cut right here. Let me quickly now go to San Antonio. Okay, here's San Antonio. Here's a price cut right there. Let me scroll down. This is a lower price point as well. Here's a $30,000 price cut, $40,000 price cut. That represents 20%. So they're price cutting over 20%. You guys see that? And look at the look at the lower more affordable housing. Where's the institutional investors? Right? Where's the institutional investor? I thought they were supposed to buy all this affordable housing. Do y'all see? Look at this. Look at this. More price cuts, more price cuts, really small price point. Let's look at another area. Let's look at Houston. I will say Houston's a little bit stronger than those other metro areas. There's a little bit of a price cut right there. There's $10,000 price cut. Here's this. Here's some good ones. $50,000 price cut, $50,000 price cut, almost $50,000 price cut. I mean, and, and look at lower price points. Look at this one. $56,000 price cut on a $226,000 home. Y'all, that's over 20% price cut. And again, you guys, this is the Black Swan event. That's the Black Swan event because all of the people that reaches, recently purchased in those communities are trapped. That's why the builders have been doing so many things to try to not have to cut prices because when they start cutting prices, it destroys the recent owners. And here's a case in point. Let me show you what the new home builders are actually doing right now to mask unaffordability. And what that is, is called temporary buy downs, which is not even a permanent buy down. It's not even a buy down. All it's doing is, is the seller, the builder or a resale seller is putting their proceeds, a portion of their money, a portion of their proceeds into an escrow account. Now, as that money sits in the escrow account, that money is used to help make payments on your mortgage. They're putting a band aid on a bullet hole. And eventually you guys, it's just going to not work. They're going to have to price cut. And when that happens, you guys, and continues to happen and more time goes on, the housing market is doomed. That's the black swan event, in my opinion. But let me show you a chart of just how many temporary buy downs builders are doing. Keep in mind, this is just a temporary buy down. This is not the actual loan. So the loan is actually fixed. So the loans on these are fixed, but they have a much higher interest rate. But what I want to show you is as of September 2022, look at the flood massive increase in temporary buy downs. And again, all that's doing is making it appear that your payments lower when the reality is, is your payments the same the entire time. It's just the sellers helping pay it. Look at this, you guys, it has flooded the market prior to what right here, June of 2022, there was no temporary buy downs. Look at that. There was nothing. So this has only been going on for about six months and it has flooded the market. Everyone is trying to offer rate buy downs. But again, you guys, here's the thing I want you to think about. How long is that going to last? It's not going to last long because we need lower prices. Everyone, need, everyone knows that. Everyone knows the inflation that I'm watching. Most people are watching. It's the housing market. I don't care about eggs and bacon and steak, okay? I'll just go fish. I love fishing. I'll just catch some fish. I do care about the housing market. And just to put this in perspective, why I think home builders are you know, the black swan event is new construction takes into is, is so important to the economy. They offer so many jobs. So when you cripple that, it's going to hurt the economy. And let me show you what the White House says about the housing market and how much of an effect that has on the economy. So this is from the White House and I'm just referencing it to let you guys know like how important the inflation in the housing market is. So let's read this. 
Shelter makes up nearly a third of the basket for CPI inflation and 40% of the basket for core CPI. So it's fair to say that if the Fed is going to battle inflation, they're going to have to crush the housing market because a much of the CPI and core CPI has to do with shelter. But let me show you this next thing from the National Association of Home Builders. Housing combined contributed to GDP generally averages 15 to 18% and occurs in two basic ways, residential investment and consumption spending on housing services. So 15 to 18%, again, 15 to 18% of the housing market is our economy. So again, minus any like money printing or anything like that, the housing market is going to crash, but I understand that the word crash triggers people, especially if you're a realtor or an investor. So let's just say reset. All right. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Reset. All right. So the housing market is going to reset, but I have to warn you guys in order for that to happen, people are going to get hurt and not just new home builders. There's going to be sellers in distress, unfortunately, that are also going to get hurt. And unfortunately, you guys, that's what's going to need to happen to get back to fundamentals. Now, here's the thing. If you do own a home loan modification and you're falling behind, Call your servicing department. See what type of loan modification you have to make your home ownership more affordable. Now, if you're out there buying, understand this as well. If you're going to buy right now, you're buying when the house market is a falling knife. But if you are going to buy, understand you will have to hunt. You will have to do due diligence. But what I'm also saying is it's going to be a lot easier to find a deal of our dreams in the future. Now, unfortunately, you guys, I have a lease that's ending, so I kind of have to speed this up. I have to keep hunting and keep finding my house, but it is what it is, you guys. This is what I think. I believe, again, you guys, the housing market will lead us into recession. The top catalyst of that is going to be new home builders if we don't count on affordability. Now, other than that, guys, I really appreciate you following along this journey with me. I hope this video gave you guys new insights, value, and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, I do wish you luck and I hope you win.